How are we doing, brewers? Brew day today. Um, I'm going to be doing Son of a Punky, which is the Malt Miller Grain Recipe Kit. So I've got it right here. Um, yeah, so it's a it's a it's a brew dog punk IPA clone. So I do like my kind of West Coast IPAs, but I have to admit I've not drunk a whole lot of that brew dog IPA. Um, if I'm out, I tend to stick with uh, like Shipyard. Uh, I have had it in the past, but it's been a while. So I'm actually going to do this as a grain to glass. Um, but I'm also going to compare it with a can or a bottle of Punk IPA. So we'll see how that kind of holds up. Um, just getting everything kind of ready. I've got my recipe here. Quite simple, really. It's, it's literally just... Uh, th this makes two 19-litre batches, which is kind of why I gravitated towards it. Uh, on the recipe kits, the, 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 the standard kind of recipe kits on the Malt Miller are usually for kind of one batch. So just for convenience, I, I got this one uh, because if you watch the channel, you know I run a B80 Pro, I usually do double batches. Um, so really straightforward, you know, 10 kilograms uh, of, of pale malt and then a bunch of hops. The is in the kettle, I'm just going to set this to go for 66 I think for this one. Uh, I've not checked the recipe but I'll double check it before I put the grains in. And um, yeah, well, here we go. Alright, so we're just about to mash in. Nice, easy grain bill. This is literally, um, yeah, 10 kilograms of pale malt. So, can't really go wrong with that. Pretty much all done. Bit of a thicker mash than I'm used to. Um, but this kind of recipe kit from the Mark Miller is intended to do two times 19 litre batches. Uh, so I typically do 23. I'll go for 23 litre batches or two of them. Um, typically just start at 40 litres. Guestimated and went 33 for this one. Probably could have come up to 35. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of working the last bit of grain in. Shouldn't be too bad uh, once I've got it all in. But yeah, like I said, a bit of a thicker mash. But... I don't think there's anything to worry about. I don't need to really top it up, I don't think. There we go, it's made me work for it, but um, we've got a nice consistency in the end, so pretty sure I've got all those dough balls. There are quite a few actually today, uh, but we're looking, uh, yeah, looking pretty good now. The mash mode, um, and we'll get recirculating um, around the malt park for 15 minutes. Mash out. Mash out for 15 minutes. We're right near the boil, we're at 98 degrees Celsius, and um, yeah, I'm gonna give it a few minutes, let it come to the full boil, and crank the power down to around 40 45 percent and get the steam hot and condenser on. No boil hops for this one, um, it's a 60 minute boil. And the first hop addition is at 12 minutes before flame out. So uh, we'll get that in with the protoflock tablets. See you in a bit. We are 12 minutes before the end of the boil, very precise. So I'm gonna pop that open and uh, get my 100 grams of Apollo. So hopefully I've got these uh, measurements right and I've also got my two protoflot tablets in there, so in the go. I shall be back in seven minutes. Okay, back again. Uh, Willamette, Chinook and Cascade going in. Had to double check then. Oops, I lost some. Had to burn myself on this. Final hop edition at Flame Out. So we have got Willamette, Cascade, Chinook, and Centennial. So this is a huge hot bill. By far and away the biggest one I've ever done. Mm. 
Okay. So we'll let those dissolve in there for a few moments and uh, yeah, then I'm going to get the steam hat off and turn off the elements. Okay, so we are cooling away. Uh, turn temp down to 39 already, so we've been on a few minutes. Um, we are whirlpooling around while it's cooling at the same time. Frustratingly, I was due to get my second adjustable dip tube for the, uh, yeah, the return to so I could dial in my uh, my whirlpool and capture a load of trub, which I really kind of needed for this brew considering there's so much hot matter in there. Uh, but I missed my delivery yesterday, and so it's my own fault. It's due to come today, but after brew day, so too late. Never mind. So we are coming down to temp. I will pitch. I usually pitch around 22. So. Unless the groundwater is really cold, I, I, I don't tend to get much below that. It's, um, it becomes a little bit kind of false economy after a while, <laughs> between wasting water and cooling your you water down. But anyway, uh, the yeast is there already. Um, this was actually a substitution yeast, um, but yeah, obviously it's a dedicated American West Coast ale yeast by Lalamand. So uh, yeah, I'm sure that will do the trick just nicely. Right, so part of the reason that this grain to glass has taken so long is it has taken me an absolute age to find anywhere locally that's actually selling this stuff which is quite incredible really considering how popular it is 5.4 percent i had a feeling this was stronger maybe maybe they reduced the abv at some point or maybe i'm just misremembering um and what's kind of drawn my attention to that is the fact that the son of a punky clone our recipe kit from the malt miller is actually estimated to be at 6.1 percent so you know quite a bit higher um, and like I was mentioning before, my final gravity was about on the mark, but I had less uh, wort in the fermenter. So my beer is around about, and you know I'm, I'm bad at taking uh, gravity readings <laughs> and actually doing the calculation. But I'd say it's probably about 6.4, 6.5% overall. Um, so let's get pouring. Reach for a glass. Sorry about that. <laughs> there you go. So, not much carbonation, although this has just come into the fridge, it's about 5 degrees Celsius, so a little bit on the cool side, um, but let's see, uh, see how we get on. Okay, so, I don't think there's any sediment at the bottom there, so I'm not even sure if it's can conditioned, but uh, there you go, slight cloudiness to it, I don't know if you can see that. Maybe it's a bit of chill haze, I'm not sure, but there you go. Lovely looking beer nonetheless. It's on the nose. Yeah, I mean, big fruity smells, mango, I would say. A bit of citrus. I'm, I'm really not a sommelier or anything like that. Uh, so I'm not going to go into too much detail and embarrass myself, but you know, I know a good beer when I taste it and I smell one, so. Slightly bitter, not massively bitter. And I, th I think I feel like I've said this before, but other kind of IPAs where the fruitiness of the uh, the nose doesn't necessarily necessarily translate into the final taste. I think this is a little bit the same. But it's a very, very nice beer nonetheless. Maybe, I'm, maybe I was expecting something different. Maybe I'm so used to the Juicy Session IPA kits by Mango Jacks that I've, I've kind of lost all kind of uh, you know concept of reality. Nice mouthfeel, a little bit thinner, I think, than I was expecting as well. Um, but overall, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a brew dog beer, so you know it's good, right? Um, you know, it's very well balanced. Uh, I can say a little bit thinner on the mouthfeel than I expected. I'm not sure what I was expecting, uh, to be honest. But um, maybe a little bit more viscosity or venosity, almost, I suppose. Um, it really is a very drinkable beer. And at 5.4%, it's... Yeah, I mean, it's not... It's not massively high, but you know, put a few of these away and you'll be, uh, you know, you'll be well tanked. But very good, 
very bitter not very bitter just 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 bitter enough for the for the strength of the alcohol um, not massively fruity I don't think on the on the on the flavor profile slightly citrusy um, but my palate's knackered after years of curry and beer abuse so don't listen to me there you go so that's the first one the brew dog punk IPA itself so next I think I'm gonna pour another glass of keg and we'll see how it measures up okay, I've just pulled a glass of keg so you can see it's a little probably a little bit darker uh, not significantly more dark again a tiny little bit hazy probably a probably a darker straw color than the, than the actual can but Again, you kind of, it might just be me, but kind of a fruity a citrus on the nose, but um, my nose is knackered, don't listen to me. It's what it tastes like that matters, right? <laughs> nice head, not over carbonated, just nicely carbonated. So probably as you would expect coming off keg, you know, I've kind of dialed into my personal preference. So, you know, a lot smoother to drink, not fizzy, not that the, not, 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 not that the can was particularly fizzy, but you know, it, it, it seems a lot smoother on the, the kind of mouth. You can definitely tell it's a bit stronger, <laughs> that's for certain. That's for certain, but it's also it's also a little bitter as well. Oh, moist is going. That's how strong it is. <laughs> but they balance each other out as always, you know, with bitterness and kind of alcohol strength. Um, it seems a little bit more floral, almost earthy, and I'm not sure if that's just kind of from the bitterness or just the way my kind of palate's perceiving it, but. And I think a lot of the extra bitterness, and I may be wrong, <clears throat> but because there was so much hot matter going into the fermenter, because I had a terrible whirlpool, um, obviously the fermentation in the in the fermenter has had that hot matter in the fermenter for a while, you know, at least whilst it's fermenting for a week or so. So that's probably introduced, if not bitterness, then perceived bitterness at least. And that's probably where some of that's coming from. Now it's definitely not overpowering at all and it actually balances out really nicely. I feel like there's a I feel like there's a lot more to this beer. I love Burrito's lawyers after me. But um I actually prefer this so far. It, and I know it's not exactly to style or to, to the recipe. Well it is to the recipe, but you know, it's obviously a clone beer. And that clone beer is, you know, giving you a stronger beer anyway. So it's not quite the same, but you can tell it's kind of, you know, you, you can tell it's originated from, from that uh, kind of punk IPA for sure. And I should mention as well, I don't think it did, and I, I apologise if I, if, if I did and I'm, I'm repeating myself, but this was actually dry hopped as well. Um, with a ton of hops and I, <laughs> I can't even remember how many hops went into it um, I think there was five packets of 100 grams if I, if I remember rightly not for the dry hop just overall but I think three or four of them um, three or four hops went into the dry hop at 32 grams each. So, you know, you, you, you talk a significant amount. Mm. You can definitely get that, that bitterness is starting to kind of build up, for sure. But again, it's not it's not unpleasant. It's It, it, it balances nicely. It balances, I've drunk that way too quick. Whew. Right, okay. 
So next up is the bottle. So uh, that's been in the fridge as well, been chilled, probably a little bit too cold still, but we'll dive in anyway. Um, I've had a couple of gushes recently, been using carbonation drops. So um, I'll open it on camera and hope for the best. See you in a second. So here we go, here's the money shot. Punk, crudely written. It's my soul being crayon. It's a bit of a hiss though. Mm, I'll be regretting that. Oh no, okay, it's alright. Mmm, big fruit flavours. Big fruit flavours on the nose there. Very noticeable. I'll lift it up a bit so you can see me pouring it. Oh, God, that, that is really nicely carbonated. I tend to use carbonation drops just because I'm lazy. And I've had some bad results <laughs> recently. Not bad, but you know, just a little either under carbonated or, or over carbonated. Wow, you can see I poured that carefully as well, and you can see the difference. Look how cloudy that is. It's the, the difference between keg and, and bottles is is astonishing. I always, always, always prefer keg. I don't know if people have their own kind of opinions on that, but look at that. Wow. Okay. Okay. Fruity, citrusy. Wow, that is t that is a totally different beer. That is a totally different beer. I'm, I'm absolutely amazed. <clears throat> I know there's usually a difference between keg and bottle. I've done numerous kind of uh, you know comparisons, not necessarily on video. I always promise them, but never do them. Um, <clears throat> but I always kind of you know I end up bottling a few because um, I use corner kegs, 19 liter. I usually have like 22, 23 liters in the fermenter. I usually end up with a few bottles, so I, I end up kind of you know comparing and contrasting eventually. But the, that the the difference in, in that is astonishing. That is not. It's not juicy session IPA, and I, I know I keep banging on about this, and I know that <laughs> it's a cracking get all of it. Uh, but it's not a million miles away. It's definitely more bitter and it's definitely stronger and a little bit less fruitier. But it's got that kind of, you know, that fruitiness and oh, that drinkability that, you know, oh, that, that is really good. Look at that. Clear as mud. Right, I'm gonna stop supping. And I'm gonna summarize. I'm surprised. I thought the keg was gonna be the better of the keg in the bottle. For a change, that's actually not true. The bottle version is quite superior. Um, like I said, a little bit more fruity. It's really, really nicely carbonated as well, and, and that's that's unusual for me. If I was doing a blind taste test, I'd say there were three totally different beers. Um, I know I said they were kind of, you know, the, 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 the keg version seemed like an extrapolation of the, you know, you can tell it was kind of, kind of from the same family, but maybe that's just because I know that they are. <laughs> the, the, the idea, at least, is that... Um, Oh wow! Okay, a bit different. A bit different. I wasn't expecting such a variety. I thought they would at least be fairly similar. That's just not the case at all. Uh, IPAs all one and all. There's there's no doubt about that. Um, but the variety is, is 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 very very distinct. Listen, if you stuck around right to the end. Thank you very much. I do do really appreciate it and keep those kind of comments coming in.